you, as an individual, can hire your own consultant. It's not just reserved for corporations or small businesses. You, by yourself, can find experts. If you've been listening, you know that in previous episodes I've described finding experts, finding consultants to gather information on higher education, programming, and on the oil and gas industry. Recently, I've taken some of the ideas that I've received from some of those conversations, some of those consultations, and it's led me to this question. How does a foreigner enter into a new country to have anything to do with business? I don't mean getting a visa, getting sponsored by a company to go work for them. I mean, how do you, you who want to start a business, or you who want to have business dealings with a company or companies within a country or the country itself, how do you begin the process of negotiating those deals? Where does it begin? Who do you have to find? Who do you have to know? What kind of relationships do you need to have? What kind of skills do you need? What do you need to bring to the table? How do you make it happen? And after speaking with, as an example, a software engineer who works in the oil and gas industry previously and hearing him describe that he himself wasn't sure, but if he knew, he'd be starting a business of his own. Well, since that conversation, I've taken that and thought, well, who else can I ask? Who else can I go to? It seems that this industry, the oil and gas industry as an example, would be a perfect test case because of the apparent difficulty when it comes to that industry. So, what happened? Well, a few days ago, I sent out invitations to people who bill themselves as consultants on LinkedIn, who have experience in the oil and natural gas industry. A few negotiations took place from that point on, discussions of what I was looking for, and this morning, I finally had an hour-long consultation with a gentleman who's worked in the industry as an expert, as a leader, and now is working as a consultant. After negotiating the differences in time zones, being that he's over in Sweden and I'm on Eastern time, we started the meeting at 6 a.m. Just a Skype call negotiated through LinkedIn. I had sent a list of questions that I had related to what I've described so far, just to give him an idea of what I was looking to get out of this meeting trying to set expectations as well, give them an opportunity to think about these things before I ask them with a little bit more depth during the call. Here's how I prefaced the question. Let's imagine that I'm trying to start a company in the oil and gas industry that can win a government contract with a particular country. When I've spoken with my contacts, the refrain that I hear is that when it comes to obtaining contracts or permits for business, especially in this industry, you have to know someone, someone that has connections to push through paperwork and policy. None of my contacts have relations with people in this industry, so I've asked them where they might go in order to meet people with these kinds of connections. It could be any event that serves as an introduction to a relationship, but my contacts, they're not sure what that would be. It's as if the industry is untouchable and unreachable. So in this case, I want to know how to break into it, to meet as many people as I can. How can someone make the necessary connections to be successful? Well, that question was shut down pretty quickly. This was his response. It's more important, or what's more important, is what you have to offer as a business. That's what you're there for. Is it something that a country really needs? The focus should always be on what you have to offer. There will always be hurdles, but as they come up, you will find ways around those hurdles. If you focus on what you have to offer and it's what that country needs, then you'll be able to find a partner, somebody who's in the country, somebody who's local, who you will be able to work with. They'll be interested in you and what you have to offer. So that's where you focus. It was as if I was sat down and put in my place, like I was grabbed by the shoulders, shaken, and said, and told, get your priorities in order. It was perfect. After these conversations that I've had with other coworkers or contacts, I've gotten this impression that it's getting to know somebody, making sure you, it's making sure you know the right people. When in fact, what I hear from this person who who's worked in dozens of countries has been an account executive, a general manager, and a vice president at Shell. He sits me down and says, "It's the product. It's what you have to offer. That's what it comes down to." And that shouldn't be very difficult. That shouldn't be something that results in an aha moment and a moment where you say or think of course of course what was i thinking and yet that's what that's what's happened it's easy to get priorities misarranged to confuse what's necessary with what's attractive or what's necessary with what's supplemental. The conversation continued and eventually I asked about this gentleman's educational background and recommendations, his perspective on pursuing higher levels of education, and at least for his industry, the oil and gas industry, he described working with people in the industry with Bachelor of Arts degrees in history, as in 
there was a wide variety of backgrounds. That's what he was trying to get at. Additionally, he described his own degree, a master's in engineering, and around the time when he had obtained the degree, he had the opportunity to go on for a doctoral study, but instead, there was a job opportunity right then. There was, a time, there was an opportunity to having that master's degree to go on and start working rather than not work for a certain, not work in order to complete that doctoral study. And he described how, at times, the doctoral study isn't necessary, at least for his industry. And that, in general, to be careful about substituting degrees for experience. In fact, one of the things that he advocated most of all during this conversation was developing and project management experience. That that's something that is translatable across a variety of industries. That's something that's always needed. That's something that you need to be excellent at if you're going to grow in the company. Now that stuck with me, project management experience. How can I obtain project management experience within my own company when it's as if I need experience in order to be considered to gain experience? What's an entry point there? Well, the day went on, I went into work, and there was a meeting with the COO, and we talked about, as a group, as a team, how we're bringing on board a new chief information officer. Apparently, one of the things that this new executive is interested in implementing within the IT department is a project management office. Now, I hadn't heard of this designation before, but it instigated me searching to learn more about it. And a project management office is a group or department in a company that defines and maintains standards for project management itself. That search led me to the Project Management Institute. This is an organization that develops people into project management managers in different categories within a business, different areas within a business. And so I was browsing this website and found that there are different certifications that you can obtain that are globally recognized related to project management. Here it was, an answer, an answer to a seeming answer to how to get project management experience when you may not have it in the company initially. I found the lowest tier of project management certification that they offer, the certified associate in project management, and thought that would be the right place to start. The trouble is, that there are requirements there too. You need a degree plus project management experience or a certain number of hours of project management education. Now this is offered through a variety of providers, but I wasn't sure how I might fulfill that. I looked into it and this is where, this is a moment where you have something come together that you wouldn't have seen years back, maybe months back. You see, years ago, back in 2015, when I was trying to enter the web and software development industry, I obtained a subscription to lynda.com. I completed cert certifications and coursework there in a mad dash to learn as much as I could, as fast as I could, that I might be successful within the industry. Along the way, I found all sorts of courses in leadership development and all things related to a business. And I thought I had seen something on a certificate at one time in the past related to the Project Management Institute. I started to connect the dots here. And going back to look at my certificates, I saw on some of them, out of the hundreds that I had completed, some of them specifically related to business, had in the bottom left-hand corner of the certificate an indication of how many credits that course is worth when it comes to the Project Management Institute. I went through every single course that I had ever completed and looked at the bottom left-hand corner just to see, do any of these offer credits that will be transferable to this program? These were things that I studied. These were courses that I went through over the course of two and a half years now out of interest, out of wanting to develop myself. I didn't have any idea of who might be looking at them or what they might do, but I thought this is what I need to learn because I want to be excellent in the workplace. And yet, two and a half years later, what I'm trying to figure out, how can I possibly obtain the prerequisites for this certification, I find that I already have because of the work that I've put in over the last few years, purely for the sake of learning, but as it turns out, also fulfilling the requirements for this certification. So I submitted every course that I'd completed. The minimum requirement of hours of coursework is 23, and I had 34 and a quarter, all things totaled together. I submitted the application and I'm going to have a conversation with the Institute to make sure that I have this right. These courses really do transfer and I can take the exam, no fine print, it's going to get in the way. So here's what my day looked like. Start off having an hour long conversation in consultation with a former vice president at Shell, go into work, learn about the potential project management happenings within the company, and then take action after work by joining the Project Management Institute, becoming a member, and then signing up to take the exam to get certified as an associate in project management per the conversation, per the recommendation that I had in the very beginning of the day. The thing is, everything I did today isn't 
difficult to achieve. You can do all of these things too. You can find experts in whatever you want on LinkedIn and compensate them for their work. Compensate them for sharing their expertise with you and you can find ways to apply it. That's all it is. Receiving that advice, receiving that knowledge and applying it. So whatever you're interested in, whatever you're trying to learn more about, don't be passive about it. Don't let it continue to be a dream or an interest in the back of your mind. Take action, do something about it. If you don't know where to go, ask someone, do everything that you can. Don't let up until you have found what you're looking for. There are resources all over. There are no excuses for you not to pursue this. So get started.